Welcome to Music Constructed, uh, our professional development this evening tonight. My name is Kathleen Staten and I am the manager here of Music Constructed. Um, tonight we are going to be learning about nouveau instruments and how they can help bridge the gap between recorder and pre-band. Um, your hosts and presenters for this evening are Brittany Bauman, who has extensive um, practice in using these instruments and is a representative for Nuvo and her colleague Ben Witter, who I think his claim to fame here is the uh, becoming his own theater program with these tremendous instruments. So I will uh, just encourage you to pop questions into chat so that they can address them as we go along. Um, and if we stay a smaller number, we can you can take yourself off mute and ask them live at questions uh, at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Brittany. Excellent. Thanks, Kathleen. Well, thank you so much for being with us tonight. I'm going to share some slides with you. We are so excited to be talking about pre-band. Uh, ben and I have a lot of experience. Oh, I always hit the wrong one. Um, teaching with these instruments and we have um, lots of things we want to share with you, but we want this time to be beneficial. You came here for a reason, probably with a specific question. So definitely use the chat um, and we'll try to make sure that we get to as many different questions as we can. So we're just going to give you a little bit of background. Um, we're going to start with just why both of us teach pre-band. Uh, so in my particular situation, I am elementary general music teacher, K through five. Um, and in my district, third grade is when we started recorders. Well, in that district, we didn't start band until sixth grade. So I had three years with them until they got to try another type of wind instrument. So for me, I was looking for something to keep my students motivated within the elementary general classroom. Um, they got super excited the first time they got recorders. It's like such a big deal and they can't wait to play them. And then after a year that just the enthusiasm kind of declined like yeah we've done that been there done that too cool for school so i was just looking for something to keep them engaged and motivated and so when i first found the nouveau pre-band instruments that's when i thought ah this is what i've been looking for so i personally use the dude and the two instruments they use recorder fingerings but they teach students a new embouchure and even just the fun colors I would give these to my fourth graders and it was immediately they were reengaged, they were excited again, and we could continue making progress uh, on a wind instrument. So that's how I use pre-band. Ben, how do you use it? Yeah, so when I came across Nuvo, I had just taken over a program uh, that was brought back from nothing. I was gone for about 10 years and I, I wanted to I wanted a better way to to do beginning band. I was um, not really sold on the petting zoo thing and the instrument night thing and i thought there just had to be a better way so what i use uh, i use recorders in third grade for the whole year and then in fourth and fifth grade i use nouveau instruments uh as a way to uh give them a chance to try the instruments out uh, but i give them two full years to try them out so by the time they get to sixth grade they choose one to stay with for the entire year um, and i've had really really good success in using these instruments all right, so uh, we're gonna have a couple of slides. We don't have a lot of time together, but just things I wanted to make sure that we're on the front of your mind if you're thinking about starting a pre-band program. Um, and the first thing is, if anyone on this call has taught recorder, what is the one thing you always say to recorder players? Less air, usually. <laughs> so it's great, recorders teach great basic skills. You're teaching them how to control their air by limiting it, and that's a really important skill. But then when you're preparing to play a larger band instrument, you're gonna need more air. So we just wanna remind you to make sure that you do some activities specific to moving air. Um, the more analogies you can use, like visuals, like think about a balloon, anything to get your center to expand. Um, don't get the habit of the shoulders raising to breathe. Make sure we're using the center. And they can come up with some creative visuals that help them get started. Um, ben, I'll put you on the spot. Do you have any like favorite air activities that you do? Or is it just practice with long sustained notes? Um, we'll do we'll do the, uh, I don't even know what I call it, but we do like that. Uh, mm -hmm. We do that quite a bit with the air, um, but it really builds for me in the recorder aspect. So that they get the air down with the recorder. And then when they make the switch to the Nouveau instruments, it's really not, not even a big deal. Mm. That's great. Um, and so 
then I included a couple of slides um, just in case you are someone who's here and you haven't taught band instruments anytime recently. Um, you're going to get a copy of all these slides after, but this is just step by step. If you were to teach flute embouchure and you haven't thought about it in years, you could use this as an easy reference guide. Um, my favorite thing about the toot instrument is that it actually comes with a little recorder lip plate. So this is super easy. I start all my players on this, even if somebody claims they know how to play flute. We all start with this on the toot and they can practice our rhythms, our articulation. And then I progress them up to the standard flute lip plate. Um, but sometimes students try this, they can't make a sound. I can always put this one back on. So that's one thing I really love about, that's why I started using the two and because all my students could make a sound. Um, and then same thing with the single read. So on the dude instrument, the ligature is just a lever, which is super easy. And the reed actually has a little notch on the back. So when used with the dude, it guides it right into place. So you just press it down and it will stop itself and then it will already be lined up at the top. So this is really easy way to teach students reed care, but how to set up their mouthpiece um, on durable instruments that are synthetic and washable with a really easy ligature. So they're learning instrument skills, they're learning how to set their embouchure, but it's just made really simple for them. Um, ben is the brass player, so I'm definitely much more of a woodwind player. So I'll let him just kind of highlight a little bit of why he uses pre-band brass. Yeah, so what I what I like about using the J-horn is it comes with three different mouthpiece sizes. Um, and basically what, what changes is the, uh, the inserts on the inside. And uh, they're deep to medium to kind of shallow, and it allows every student, uh, no matter what their lip size or their embouchure, to, to be able to buzz. Um, and it's, it's a very soft, so you don't have the metal mouthpiece against the lips, which causes sometimes irritation. Uh, sometimes they feel like it doesn't feel natural. So the, the, the silicone tip is really, really nice because it allows them a soft embouchure with the mouthpiece. Um, and then they just blow. And eventually I tell them, you know, if you feel your lips vibrating and they feel fuzzy, then you have done it correctly. Um, and then, you know, they just get used to that feeling the, the longer we play it. Yeah, and if you don't know what the J-horn is, that's this Nouveau instrument. Um, and so one of the cool things about pre-band is that you can mix and match different instruments and it all depends on what you're trying to achieve. So this is something we were talking a little bit about before we officially started tonight. And that's what are you using pre-band for? What is your goal? And if one of your goals is that you want students to try different types of instruments as a band selection tool, you might, you're gonna want something that will introduce the brass. So the J-horn is kind of Nouveau's all around brass instrument with the different mouthpiece cups that Ben was talking about. Um, but you could pair that with the dude and the toot. So they're trying a flute embouchure, a reed and buzzing, or you could try it with some of the larger Nouveau instruments. Um, so I, I just say, if you're thinking about using pre-band, just give some thought to what exactly you're trying to achieve um, and what you hope to get out of it. Um, and then articulation. So we were also joking around that you want to make sure that you're teaching good habits right off the bat. Um, you don't want to have your students learn something on a pre-band instrument and then have to unlearn it on a band instrument. That is completely oh, yeah, defeats yeah. the purpose. So when you're teaching pre-band, you still want to make sure you're using okay. correct articulation, the two, two, nice clear tongue, um, and that you are teaching air support, um, Ben, is there any other things that you would say you want to be careful you teach correctly? Uh, definitely, uh, definitely posture. Um, mm. So you just got to watch how they hold the instrument and how they're sitting with the instrument. Uh, plastic ones are way, way lighter than metal ones. Um, so you should be able to get a correct uh, posture without any issue with arm fatigue or anything like that. And that will transfer over to the metal instruments. Absolutely. Um, and the embouchure, you could absolutely make sure that you're teaching them how to set their mouth correctly so that you don't have to reteach that later. Um, okay, so this, I just put this fun little stock photo, um, find what's wrong. <laughs> There's always something wrong with the, the band image stock photos. Um, so I just wanted to mention that pre-band instruments 
you're not going to put them in the hands of kids and they're magically going to sound perfect, right? I don't think that anybody would expect that, but I do just want to make sure that they are beginners. And so there is still a range of pitch available on these instruments, but I choose to see that as a positive thing. Um, so one of the ways that I personally combat that is I encourage my students to sing everything before they play it. So that helps them internalize the pitches um, they're listening to the other students around them, and it gives them another mode of interaction before they go to play it. Um, so I'm a really big proponent of singing and also modeling. So I do a ton of echoing, um, listen before you play, but also learn by ear before you read music. Um, so a lot of that. Um, ben, how do you work on intonation or how do you address that? Yeah, I do a lot of singing. Um, and because I also teach K through the, well, I teach K-12. So in the very beginning, I know how they are because we sing a lot K-1-2. So in essence, kind of that's my feeder program to my feeder program. So when they get to me, I already know they can sing, they can hold pitch. So we sing before we play and I definitely model and I model on every instrument so they can hear the sound of each instrument and I will switch instruments and play with the sections uh, so they have my sound. And then I do that at the beginning and then I kind of die away so that they have, they feel like they're doing it themselves. And do you do that on every instrument as much as you can, like you rotate different ones? Yeah, yeah. So I'll do it on recorder and, and sax and flute and everything. I'll, I'll play all of them with them. Okay, that's great. Now, if you're thinking, oh, but I can't do that, don't panic. <laughs> that's how I feel about brass sometimes. Um, we're going to be talking about a WinStars pre-band curriculum. There's something called practice tracks. So basically a practice track is backing music with the instrument part. So you can absolutely use technology to your advantage. So you can send the toot players off with their toot track and they can hear what it should sound like on their instrument. So on the J-horn practice tracks, it's actually recorded with the J-horn. So it just hopefully that helps um, give you a little bit of confidence for that if you don't necessarily want to play everything yourself. Um, at least that can help you get started so you get to that level. Um, and then it's always great to use tunes that students already know. Um, that could be a popular tune. It could be um, like maybe a folk tune that everybody's kind of familiar with. Ben is really great at using tunes that students are excited about and kind of like in the moment songs. Um, what did you do most recently, Ben, for your pre-band with like a fun tune? Yeah, we're working on the Wellerman right now uh, for a okay. concert in about four weeks. So yeah, which is the um, how would you, the sea shanty that will get stuck in your ear, right? <laughs> yeah, TikTok. Yeah, TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure you all heard of that one. Um, okay, so the, if you're thinking about getting started with pre-band um, and you are not super comfortable with the band instruments. These would be the best instruments to start with in terms of accessibility for you as the teacher. Um, so they're called the Nouveau Toot and Dude. They're one octave instruments, but they use recorder fingerings. And so the idea is once a student's learned recorder, they can turn it to the side for toot and just focus on embouchure. Um, and then do they're using recorder fingerings, but they're focusing on using their single read. So this will give them a chance to use more air, to learn an embouchure, but it's not so complicated that they have to completely relearn their fingerings. Um, so that's a really good place to start. And then from there, if you want to go up to the next set of instruments, that's like the J horn. So this uses trumpet or baritone fingerings. So this is where it gets closer to the band instruments. Um, you'll see some of the ones behind me. The flute uses flute fingerings, the clarinet uses clarinet fingerings, um, and there's a saxophone. So, um, Ben, did you have anything you wanted to say about Toot and Dude? Um, I don't use them. I use the recorder. Um, mm -hmm. we, have, uh, we have a full set, so I, so I use the recorder, um, and uh, they work well. The fingerings are the same. Also, I do use WinStars, um, even though it's not the instrument for they're, they're in the key of C. Uh, so I, I play along with the recorders and they sound fantastic. Cool. Um, so again, that's a good example of how pre-band can be customized to how you want to use it. I started with Dude and Toot, but I'm running pre-band with that. Ben didn't use those, he used other instruments, but it's still pre-band. 
So there's a lot of flexibility within this, which can be overwhelming, but also reassuring. Um, so don't see that, don't get too overwhelmed. We're here to give you some ideas. Um, so you heard us mention WinStars. So when Ben and I both started pre-band programs, there was absolutely no curriculum in existence. So what I personally did was I was using these instruments, recorder fingerings. So I just used my recorder methods, which worked fine. It got through what we needed, but it just felt like it needed something specific to those instruments. Um, so then the WinStars curriculum came along and you'll see the blue books there. So now that there, there's a book that goes with those instruments with a teacher book and student books. Um, and then there's also another level for the bigger instruments, which you can see pictured underneath. Um, ben, what did you do? Because there was no WinStars when you started, right? No, I was using a jump right in is what I used to start okay. with. And it was cool and everything, but it was just it was missing some things. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just kind of plugged along with that. And then I came across WinStars one. And that's what I use for my third graders uh, with the recorder. I also use it um, sort of backwards with my fourth and fifth grade instruments and then I get to win stars two and sixth grade um but it's I love I love win stars the backtracks are phenomenal the students love playing with them they're real instruments and not midi and the songs are well written and I don't mind listening to them day in and day out so they got to be pretty good uh, yeah yeah and it, and it, it's it's written and it's it progresses at a, at a very nice speed and a very nice level um, starting at B and working your way down and then going back up to get to the high notes. And by the time we've done a third grade, we have, you know, an octave and a half or so uh, with some supplemental tunes. We're playing in duple meter, triple meter, two, four, 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 three, four, later on six, eight, various genres, uh, various um, tonalities, Aeolian, um, you know, we got major, we have minor, uh, just really well done. And it gives the students a ton of acculturation and all these different things. And going along with that, it's flexible. So there is a book and it's got a set number of music, but if you pick it up, you might think, well, I'm gonna teach for much longer than that. There's also a website. So that's the other key part to WinStars is there are books, but on the website, there's a ton of extra free material. So you can find extra music. So you can actually go on and search, I want a song for the dude, I want it to have notes B, A, and G, and show me what you've got. So it will pull up songs in the book, but then a lot of extra tunes that you can download for free. Um, so that way you can make your program as long or short as you want. Um, or if you have students that are just struggling with that note high C, they just can't get it, you can just print out some extra music um, to give them some reinforcement. So that's a really nice component of it. Um, it can be as long or short of a program as you want. And they really try to cater to students, I mean, I'm sorry, teachers that maybe aren't necessarily super familiar with wind instruments. Um, so there is a free online teacher training. Um, it's just short videos. It's kind of walks you through each instrument, how to play it, um, how to teach it as well, different games you can play. So that's a really um, good confidence booster. And then there's also play along videos which those are all on the WinStars YouTube channel. So you watch it and it will track the music for each instrument. And they, and like I said, with the practice tracks, they can hear their instrument part with the backing music. So that's a really nice practice tool um, to help students. They can use it at home for practice or in the classroom and sectionals. Um, is there anything else you use from the website, Ben, or do you use the play along videos at all? Um, I use, I use, I grabbed all the supplemental stuff off the website. So I have like, I have, uh, I have a ton of extra stuff I use. And I forgot to mention, I love the iconic notation in WinStar is one. Like, that's what I start with. That's how I introduce them to music notation. It's like the best thing uh, because it's just little squares that represent quarter notes and eighth notes. And, and I don't have to mess with lines and spaces right now. And that comes later in sixth grade after we get used to seeing uh, the pitch is rising and falling and then, you know, five traditional notation is not a problem whatsoever. Yeah, we actually did a session on music constructed a little bit ago about iconic notation. Um, so if you're not familiar with it, like Ben said, it's it's colored notation with the boom whacker colors um, and blocks to show beats instead of the staff. 
But the idea being you get them started with that and like Ben said you transition whenever you feel your students are ready to standard notation. So it's just another helpful aid and really for me the the main goal of pre band is to help students be as successful as possible. So if you can give them as many tools to support them as you can it's going to make their journey enjoyable they're going to want to stick with it and they're going to be really proud of what they can learn as they go. Um, Anything else about WinStars, Ben, before I? No, I think that covers it. OK. <laughs> uh, OK, so really quick, what I wish I knew before I started a pre-band. Um, so I'll go first. When I first started pre-band, I didn't know anyone around me who was using it, educators. I didn't know a single school who was doing it. Um, so I wish I had known that I could use everything I already knew. I didn't necessarily have to reinvent the wheel. So in my background, elementary music, I could use the other methodologies that I was already trained in. So I, I used some of my ORF training, uh, conversational solfege, even Dalcros and movement. I combined all of that together and used it to help support what we were trying to learn with the instruments. So the WinStars curriculum is fantastic in encouraging you to pull from what you're already trained in. Uh, WinStars doesn't tell you what to do on lesson one and lesson two. It gives you ideas, but really it's ultimately where your strengths are and your students' experiences as well. So I wish somebody had told me that just to take some pressure off and um, start with where you feel confident and then work your way to new things. <laughs> ben, what do you wish you knew? Yeah, so I kind of got a chance to start over on uh, cleanse my mind of this traditional beginning band whatever model that we use now that does not work. Um, so I, I wish, I mean, in, in some sense, I'm glad that I knew there was a better way. Um, I wish I knew how easy it was when I started. Um, I, was, I was a little nervous breaking new ground and kind of going in uncharted waters. Um, and I was worried because I'm a brass player. So flute fingerings are very foreign to me. And I, I wish I would have known how easy it was and uh, I probably would have started uh, with a much more can-do attitude than uh, the only attitude that I think I had for the first semester or so on them. That's a good one. Great. Um, and so we want to open it up to questions. We have a few minutes left. So if anyone has anything they're wanting to ask. Um, and we also have, Nuvo is currently running a giveaway right now, a sweepstakes. So if you want to start, but you don't have a budget, I know none of you have had that experience, right? <laughs> Budgets can be really tough, um, but they are giving away a full class set of either the smaller or larger instruments. So again, you'll get a copy of these slides if you want to take a look at it later. Um, might be something you consider if you don't have the funding already. So I will stop right there and let's see if there's any question so if you want to unmute yourself or you can put it in the chat we still have a couple of minutes we'd be happy to definitely we've got a raise hand from michelle and um, we'll come to you in just a second michelle one of the questions from the chat was um first grade how early can you start implementing these um instruments with the kids that's a good question uh well personally i've gone as young as second grade with the recorder plus so that is a regular recorder with keys um, if you have really advanced first graders, you could absolutely try it. Um, I just personally can only speak to second grade. And then personally, I've used these with third grade as the youngest. Um, ben, what's your experience? Um, I usually start with third grade just uh, from my experience, the dexterity and the fine motor skills. Are, um, they're just not there with the younger students. And so I don't want them to have any sort of roadblocks or failures right off the get go. Uh, so third grade is when I start a recorder. Yeah. Great. Michelle, go ahead. Take yourself off mute. Um, so I, I'm a Suzuki violin teacher and I will throw any instrument to any kid of any age and I get a kick out of my four year old walking around with the J horn going, it makes fart sounds. <laughs> So like a four year old can get a pretty decent tone on a J horn, which is actually where my question is. Um, I did get the WinStars 2 book. I, I experiment on my own children. I have a nine year old, a seven year old and a four year old. Um, and I, I gave the J horn to my nine year old and just he couldn't produce 
a high high enough pitches I, like i love the concept of everything being in c and everybody being like all three instruments the clarinet the j sax the j horn being able to play together in one class but i was finding that my nine-year-old just couldn't with his embouchure on the j horn produce the B, like the G, the A, and the B, and middle of treble clef that the Windstars book was asking of him at the beginning. And I'm just wondering how on earth you start the J horn in the middle of, do you start them down an octave if they need to? Do you start them in mixed groups with a student flute? Do you start the J horns on their own and just like, like whatever partial you get is what you get, kids go for it. And then like roll them in as they find the, the pitches. How do you get J horn in with like the flute and the clarinet? Yeah, so the J horn, it's written in treble, but it's got the eight. So it's supposed to sound down an octave. So I'm not sure if you caught that. You did. Okay. Um, and then I would, I usually start them with either the small mouthpiece or the middle one, um, because you, the different mouthpieces do bring out different pitches of the J horn. So if you put the trombone one on, it's going to bring out the lower notes. Um, ben, do you have anything to speak to on that? Besides yeah, I, I never use the big one. Um, because I want to give them a uh, middle of the range to an upper range. So usually I start them on two. Um, if you're looking for the higher notes, I highly suggest the one, which is the smaller one. Uh, also make sure that the teeth are apart and the corners are extremely tight. If they're puffing their cheeks out, then their embouchure is way too loose. Uh, so just keep, I'd say about a finger's width apart of your teeth. Just pull that out, keep the corners super tight, chin flat, and just blow a ton of air. Um, eventually the muscles will build up and they'll start creeping up with their range. Awesome, great. Uh, we've got a couple more in the chat. Brittany, I don't know if you just want to address them from there. It starts with Barbara asking um, how often you meet with sure. your patients once a week. Yeah, um, so I personally right now I'm working with a after school program uh, twice a week. So we have by the time they settle in, it's, it's maybe about a 45 minutes if we're lucky of actual instruction. But yeah, so we have twice a week um, for a full semester. And then the second half of the year, I get a different group of kids. Um, each kid has a school instrument. So they have a classroom set that the school owns. We wash and we reuse them before the next class. Um, every school does it a little differently. So I know some schools do have kids by their own, but a lot of cases that's just not really financially um, possible. So in every situation I've taught in with pre-band, it's been school-owned instruments. Do you have the same, Ben, or is it different? Yeah, mine are all school-owned. Uh, they just have different mouthpieces. So we keep them for eight weeks, and then we wash everything and, and switch instruments. Um, I see my students three times a week for 30 minutes each. Um, and then in sixth grade, I see them every day for 55 minutes. That might be a new record. I don't think I've ever heard of that much. That's awesome. <laughs> Um, what's the average cost of the recorder plus? Um, I'd say about 15 ish um, for the cost. And again, that's usually school instruments, but this one could also be an adaptive instrument. So this could be if you have a class of open hole recorders, but you have one student that has difficulty covering the openings, you could just have one or two of these. Um, but contact your favorite store west music um, oh, west and they'll <laughs> ask them about educator pricing and they can give you all of that information um our friend in bermuda was wondering if your contest is open to overseas participants oh it's open to us only uh that's i'm sorry <laughs> that's a good question though but janice you can still actually all of you on the call tonight uh if when you registered you should have gotten a link to a special page where you can actually get 15% off of a price of one of these instruments. And that code is good through May 1st. So you can at least take advantage of that. And Janice had one more question, which was about purchasing reads for the dude, where she can do that. Yeah, uh, West Music. So you can purchase reads in sets of three and we have strength one, one and a half and two. Um, and then another fun fact is you can use cane reads if you want to but they're soprano saxophone size or E flat clarinet, but soprano sax is more common, um, but it is possible. But yes, you can buy them in extra sets of three. Um, and then I think I saw one more question. Oh, just Emily saying that she has a first grade clarineo student. She's doing really well. She's reaching the finger holes well, and we're using accent on achievement instead of wind stars, but it works. 
which is great. That's another example of what your goals are and what you need to achieve them. You, nobody's telling you it has to look a specific way. Um, every pre-brand program I know has looked a little bit different and that's great because everybody is different. So I'm a fan of that. That's fantastic. Well, Brittany, as ever, you're right on the nose with your presentation and have covered everything so beautifully. And Ben, it, this is the first time I've had the opportunity to hear more about uh, the flexibility of this program from another voice. So thank you so much to both of you for being here. You may think of questions after the fact, and you are more than welcome to reach out to us with those questions. I'm putting our email in the chat, which is service at musicconstructed.com. It's a lot to type. Um, you can type any questions that you would have for Brittany or Ben, and I'll get those passed along to you. Um, also for attending tonight, you do have access to a PD certificate for 30 minutes. Don't worry, we'll be sending you out the email with all of that information so you won't have to keep track of it. You'll get a copy of the slides, tonight's video, um, and some other supporting materials. So on behalf of Music Constructed, thank you so much for joining us and a huge thank you to Brittany and to Ben for this informative session. We so appreciate you sharing your expertise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a great night. We hope to see you again at another Music Constructed PD, which yes, there's one on Wednesday if you're interested. <laughs> Have a great night and thanks for coming. Bye everyone. Bye.